In July, we brought you the story of physicist Sterling Backus and his 11-year-old son Xander, who are building a 3D-printed full-scale Lamborghini in the garage. The Backus family has spent nearly 20 months on the project, and this week, Sterling took it out for a test drive. Albeit, a brief one. Not exactly street legal yet. But overall, the test was a success. You're leaking! You're leaking a lot, Dad! Yeah, looks like it sprung a bit of a leak, but at least he had a fire extinguisher in the passenger seat in case anything went awry. The kids even jumped in for the final stretch around the driveway. Oh, this is awesome. Right now, the only 3D printed parts on the car are the dash and the wicked cool gear shifter. But after Bacchus looks for leaks, he plans on welding the frame together and putting the 3D printed body panels back on so they can start doing the bodywork. Now that the car's running, it appears that Bacchus is still on schedule to visit local schools with the car by next spring. I mean, if this doesn't get kids interested in STEM, I'm not sure that anything will. Tell you what, looks like they're having fun, and you can follow the team's progress on Facebook and YouTube. Researchers from Imperial College London have created a flying fish robot that can launch out of the water and glide through the air. Flying fish, though, seems like a stretch. Maybe, like, water-compatible glider? The bio-inspired robot can travel more than 85 feet through the air after it takes off and could be useful for a number of applications, particularly collecting water samples after floods or monitoring pollution. Previous attempts at a craft that can transition from water to air have failed because takeoff takes too much power to propel the small robots. This team's system uses 0.2 grams of calcium carbide powder that is held in a combustion chamber. The lone moving part on the robot is a pump that draws in a little water to create a reaction in the chamber. The reaction creates a burnable gas that ignites, expands, and sends the craft airborne. It generates a force 25 times the robot's weight. The robot has been tested in a lab, lake, and wave tank. The results have shown that the robot is not only capable of taking off in rough conditions, but it can also make multiple jumps simply by refilling its tank with water. In the future, it could land, take a water sample, and then take off to another area. Probably in some sort of like radioactive, devastated water or something, or maybe something nice in the future, which would be nothing. Next, the team plans to test the robot in more hazardous real world locations, like offshore energy platforms and to monitor the ocean. They've also partnered with Swiss Federal Laboratories for material science and technology to build new vehicles using the technology. Are you eating lunch right now? Stop. New York company Rat Trap says that it has the most humane way to solve the Big Apple's rat problem. More of a, well, it's more of an infestation, really. The company created battery-operated traps that lure rats up a ladder and onto a platform that drops them into a solution that knocks them out quickly before drowning them. Ah, I mean, remember, we're just talking rats here, so... No love lost. According to the company, the Echomelia is more humane because other solutions like poison are not only harmful to other area predators, children, and the elderly, but it also takes days to kill them. This one does it in a few seconds and holds them in a tank that can hold 30 to 40 dead rat carcasses at a time. Who's cleaning that thing? New York City reportedly has a rat population of roughly 2 million brown rats about a quarter of the size of the human population. Brown rats can grow to 20 inches long and weigh two pounds. But so far, only one was so big that the Echomelia couldn't handle it. Really? One of the rats caught over the summer in a Brooklyn pilot was so big it broke the spring. I'd say it's an infestation. The rat trap is designed with a tamper-proof enclosure that mounts to a wall either indoors or outdoors. The trap uses sunflower seeds and nuts as bait so that there aren't any problems with poisons. That includes the non-toxic alcohol-based solution they call EchoFix that's in the vat. The design has actually been in use in Europe for more than 10 years and has trapped as many as 80 rats each month in everything from factories to agribusinesses. I mean, it's easier to keep track also because there's a dial or dead rat counter on the side. I prefer dead rat counter. The Echomelia costs from $300 to $400 to buy and maintain, but if it continues to work well in Brooklyn, it could soon be found around the rest of the city. 
I mean, but like, what is best case scenario? We have to, we have to dispose of two million dead rats? Where are we gonna put those? I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.